it's always great to play here. And mm -hmm. again, we're making new fans, and there was our fans were there, so mm -hmm. great time. Yeah, but it's difficult when we do two hours. <laughs> you know, There's when, a you lot have, of when you have eleven albums out, it's like a you know, it's a it's tough to make a set list that is going to make everybody happy because we have fans of all eras, you know. And, uh, and you know, normally it's like when a when a fan discovers a band, the first album they hear ends up you know being their favorite, and and we have fans that are you know back from the first album, Storm Rider and Burn Offerings, and you know the Dark Saga and all these you know it's so we have all these things that we have to dig into once in a while, but we want to play the new stuff because it's our new stuff and mm -hmm. it's really great, I think. So it's a challenge. <laughs> I, I'm bold that way, where I, I feel at home on stage. I mean, that's just the bottom line. I feel like I belong there. Um, so I, I think it just comes naturally. I just think it's naturally in me to be a performer and ham it up and whatever. Just do, you know, just entertain. And, and, and I enjoy doing it. I have a good time doing it. And uh, I wouldn't trade it for the world. I, it's, you know, everyone dreams about doing what they love. And... I'm for a living, and I'm able to do what I love for a living, and be blessed to work with my brother and and uh, my best friends, and you know it's it's great, you know. It's yeah, it's awesome. Mm -hmm. We have a good time. He belongs with this band, no question. So and it's, it was we're all it was fun. obvious, like from the first time we met each other. I mean, we worked together. We met each other on tour before, but you know, I, I was not in such a great place in my head, and. Uh, his old band into eternity opened for us and i was really having a difficult time and so we didn't really bond at that point but when he came and and we did the the audition we wrote a song together and it was like it was, it was obvious it really was great quick. and it's and it's just you know and through the last few years all the stuff that we've gone through together on tour and we, it just gets stronger you know I mean it's not like we can we can do 150 shows together and, and you know a few days after the tour is over be calling each other because we miss each other yeah and that's a that's a kind of a different thing you know what I mean but but we're getting a group of guys like that together where it's it's I mean I think you can see it on stage <laughs> that's I mean the first half is very evil uh, Zombies and the apocalyptic tragedy that could happen to the world. I don't. It's 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 it was great. I'm a big horror guy, and he wrote a horror show, so I know he was into the monsters and stuff, and he he appreciates the um, the, the horror movies and all that kind of stuff. So I thought it was really cool to be able to tell a story, and yeah, it was it was fun. Yeah, I mean the back half of the record has a lot of somehow it all works together. I mean it's. I, I don't know, man. It's just we didn't. It wasn't contrived. It's just what we do, and uh, I think you have a lot of different, a different, a lot of different things happening on the back half. You know, you have a song like Cthulhu, which is a pretty typical Ice Earth song, and you have a song like Peacemaker, which is not. You know, it's definitely a new thing for us. Um, it kind of makes me think of Thin Lizzy, and it's more of a rock song with our metal thing happening, but it's like a Western heavy metal song, so it's kind of cool. It's actually really cool. Yeah. Um, Highway Man is the highlight of the record for me. And, you know, that's a special thing because of the the lyrics of that song. I love it. it I love the original version, you know. Um, I've become, been listening to a lot of country music in the last few years and, and a lot of Bruce Springsteen. And I'm really <coughs> starting to, uh, I think I'm starting to, listen to songs. I never really was listening for the lyrics before, but I think as I'm getting older, I really am connecting to lyrics more, to, to some of these amazing, amazing songwriters, you know. And so it's, you know, it's a different, it's like an evolution in my head that's going on. And uh, <clears throat> so that, that song is one of my most favorite ever, you know. And, for, and we, you know, we rocked it out and made it a heavy metal song, a, a rock song, but, um, you know, the four of us on it singing together, it's the brotherhood, man, and and it's a, they're, these are. I've said it all day today. I mean, I've got my best friends in this entire. Business. <laughs> Hansi from Blind Guardians, there, Stu's there, Michael from Volbeat, Russell Allen, really. I mean, I met Michael, I guess 
a little, over three years ago, and we just instantly bonded. Like, <laughs> it was like, you know, some lost souls found each other. It's really weird. It's like, it's a, you know, we have, we have a lot of, in common, um, you know, people make fun of us all the time because they call us the bromance guys. And, yeah. you know, because there's a lot of love there and everybody can see it. I mean, our, and so they, you know, they fuck with us all the time and laugh about how tight we are, but it's just the way it is. You know, it's like a, a really special thing. And, you know, Michael's been a fan of Iced Earth since he was a kid in school. He bought the first album when it came out, the day it came out. And uh, he's got some really cool stories about that in his early years and with Iced Earth and everything. And <clears throat> it's an honor for me to know that I've had some kind of an influence on a guy as special as he is, because I think he is very special. I think he's got a very special, his whole thing, and it's because he's such a good person. And he's got all these influences from all these different people, but he's been able to, to create something very unique with Volbeat, and very special. And they're all a special group of guys, and their crew's awesome too. So, you know, we, we love being on tour with those guys, and they love us. And we have, yeah. we, we spend so much, I mean, I, I felt like I did a thousand sit-ups the other day from laughing so fucking hard, because we yeah. laugh all the time. I mean, we, we fuck with each other and have, you know, it's just fun. You know, there's mm -hmm. always some kind of shenanigans going on. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a cool thing. And Michael, I, I wanted to do this song for a few years, um, but I wouldn't do it without him. You know, so it was basically like, or any of these guys. I, actually, yeah. there it, it wouldn't it wouldn't have happened if anybody couldn't have done their parts. If Russell couldn't do it or whatever, I would have just said, okay, we're gonna leave it in the can and you know try to do it another time. Somehow, all the stars lined up right and everybody's schedules worked enough to the to where they were able to make it happen. I mean, Stu and I were in the same studio together. Mm -hmm. Michael did his parts in, in uh, Denmark and Russell did his in, in uh, Jersey. <laughs> Plagues of Babylon is it's the story that the first six songs are, and it's basically the zombie apocalypse, but within the Something Wicked universe. So that's why you see Set, our mascot, who's been on many album covers, not all of them, but on a lot of them, um, he's he's ready to unleash the plagues of Babylon. He's got them chained around their necks, and he's ready to to let it go, so that the plague spreads, and you know, and so this in the story. The sessions are controlling the governments, and they're the front. The governments are the front men, and they're ready to unleash this this plague, this virus on humanity to kill a huge amount of the population. But what they don't under realize is that they're making a cocktail that actually causes the dead to rise. And mm -hmm. so, what happens in, in the story is you have the resistance, which are the kind of the people that are aware of the government's crimes and are fighting that, and then they get stuck fighting the zombies too, which are end up becoming kind of a weapon for the government. So it's a, it's a really twisted kind of a story that fits pretty well into the whole Something Wicked thing, and that's, that's, what, we, uh, that's what we went with, so. Starting January. Yeah, starting January the 9th. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and then uh, we uh, Finished January, February, Europe, and then yeah. uh, two weeks off in March, and then we go to Australia, New Zealand, and New Zealand, Central America, South America, North America. Yeah, Make back to Europe for festivals mm -hmm. in the summer. Mm -hmm. Memphis. Yep, and then maybe, just maybe, you'll take a little bit of it, some you know yeah, brain I need, time. I need a vacation. Yes, when I can't tell you. I mean, it's a scheduling thing, and you know, I just don't know right now. I mean, we're, we're Iced Earth is working so hard, and Hansi's really busy with stuff, and it's just, you know, it's going to happen for sure. But I, I can't tell you. You know, um, I discovered Maiden with the number of the Beast record, and I was immediately like, "Who the fuck wrote these songs?" That's all it was Steve Harris, you know, he's he's written all the best Iron Maiden songs. And I then I saw him on the Peace of Mind tour and I was absolutely fucking blown away. Like that the dude was you know, they they were all badass and Dickinson's killer, obviously. But just the way that guy plays the bass was I, I almost stopped playing guitar to because I wanted to play bass, but I couldn't afford it. <laughs> I couldn't afford the rig. So, I mean, it was just a like I, 
it was a you know small crowd, maybe two thousand people in a place that holds probably twelve. So they didn't sell that many tickets. It was in Fort Wayne, Indiana. It was on a Peace of Mind tour. And the attack and the fucking the tightness. It's just like he's like a machine, you know. And I think that's when I was really like, holy fuck, man, you know. And then I just started reading interviews and stuff, and I thought, man, this, you know, this is a guy that uh, is. He's the only person I've ever been around that I've met that I've been nervous, like a kid, like this. <laughs> you know, I mean, I've met Dickinson and Ronnie was a friend, and I've known all these great guys. You know, I mean, that in the metal scene. But when I was around Steve Harris, I was literally like a fucking kid. I think it's really important for people to have the right to defend themselves. I think history shows us that if the governments are the only ones with the guns, then the people are victims and they die by the millions. So that's been proven time and time again. Hitler, Stalin, Mao, Pol Pot, let's go down the list. So I think that any time the people are not able to defend, them, defend themselves, which is a God-given right, whatever your God is, that's a problem. So that's all I'm going to say on that subject. I mean, I, of course I agree. You have to be able to defend yourself. Even if I live in Canada, but I still make sure that I have home defense, you know, and all that kind of stuff, you know. But And that, that should be any person's right, to defend your family if someone is either entering your home or trying to hurt you. you a know? lot of people don't understand that the the thing in the States is it's like the Second Amendment's a big deal because, but I think since World War II, the public has been kind of manipulated, their thinking has been, and, and I think it's really, the reason that we have a Second Amendment is to be able to defend ourselves, not against the common criminal, which is a nice byproduct of, of an amendment like that, but it's to defend ourselves against a criminal government which historically has happened time and time and time again. And, and when a government goes completely corrupt and they turn their guns on the people, the people have to be able to stand up for themselves. And, you know, it's not about being an extremist and all the shit that they sell you and all these, all these things. It's not about that. It's just about basic understanding of history and realizing that, you know, at some point, and I think we're witnessing that and what's happening in the United States, and, uh, and it's been going on for a while, obviously, but it's getting worse and worse and worse by the minute. That uh, we have a situation brewing, but mark my words, the people will take care of the situation. It's going to take a while to get them awake. We're working on that, but we're going to try to right the wrongs of what our government is doing around the world because I'm sick of it. <laughs>